Hello, hello. This is a bit of a prequel to the prologue. Uh, I'll introduce myself in a moment, but wanted to give a quick overview here first of what we're trying to do. So this is kind of a sample high-level architecture for MSK and MSK Connect. As you can see here, essentially, we have a cluster living on a VPC, as well as the actual connectors, the different subnets, the different gateways, all leading out to our cloud instance. So this is important to know for everything that's going to be coming ahead that this is the sort of overall structure, just to make life easier. And take it away, me, from the past. Hello, hello. So my name is Paul here with ClickHouse, and we're going to be setting up an MSK instance for testing purposes using the ClickHouse Kafka Connect sync that we created. So the thing is, these aren't necessarily best practices or recommendation. Your mileage may vary. We're just trying to sort of show an example setup to make your life easier. All right, so first thing we're going to do here is we're actually going to create the VPC. This is kind of the networking part of everything. You may already have a you may already have a networking setup, in which case, you know, you can kind of move on from there. But for those that don't, we're gonna have three availability zones. And the reason is because the default recommendation for MSK is three uh, zones. So we're just gonna use those as kind of the ease. Next, as far as private and public subnets go. So in the documentation, we mentioned public access and, and wanting public access and having private access can complicate things. We will show you private access in this case, but you'll see that, you know, there's sort of pros and cons with that. Um, so I will actually get rid of the. You know, we'll leave the, the public and the private here for now just to make life easier, but uh, in, in theory, you might be able to get rid of those. Uh, and we're going to do a NAT gateway per availability zone. And that's going to be what actually goes out to the public. So will it? Aha. Uh -huh. All right. Let's make our life easier and cheaper. And we'll just have one, one NAT gateway. Because the more you have, the more money it costs, of course. Uh, again. Your mileage may vary. This isn't necessarily recommendations. This is just sort of setting up. All right, so this is creating the subnets. This is the gateway, the IP, NAT gateway, we're waiting for it. All right, while that's doing that, let's create ourselves a cluster. All right, so we're going to do custom create to go through all the steps just to show you folks. And let's see here, we'll do... Something like that, or... You know what? We'll go a step further. There we go. All right. Got that. Uh, in my experience, provisioned worked out better. So I'm going to leave it at that. You could probably do serverless again. Your mileage may vary. Uh, this is going to be a small testing instance. So let's not sort of over engineer the wheel there. We'll just do small. See, this is where that three zones comes into play that I mentioned. One broker per zone, three zones. And. We'll leave the defaults. All right, so here's that MSK VPC that we created. And in zone that, we'll do the private subnet. In zone two, we'll do the private subnet. And in C, we'll do the private one. You can technically do the public one. If you do, that will allow you to do the public access. Uh, there is pros and cons to this. Again, for testing purposes, I'm just leaving it off. I'm just setting all this, but you can do that. Uh, security groups. So we're going to use the default one that we have. I'll show you, in fact, what's in that. I'll give you a hint. It's pretty much wide open. All traffic is allowed in and out. So, you know, again, no reason to reinvent the wheel here, but just to make our lives easier. And we'll do that next. Uh, IAM, role-based authentication, very useful. If you want to do something a little bit fancier or you want to do something different, go ahead and, you know, choose your other settings. But again, for this, doing that, we'll use all that. All right. We are going to enable CloudWatch delivery. 
Uh, you do need a log group for it. So let's go ahead and create a log group for it. Simple enough. We go to CloudWatch and we create a log group. It's uh, pretty quick. Here's log groups. Create log group. Now there's uh, one we already created, but we're gonna just use our own here. Retention, we can set to whatever we want. In our case, let's just go with a day. Uh, you might wanna do longer. Again, the, the more logs you collect, the better, obviously, for debugging and other purposes. But again, for this, you know, demo intro, we're just gonna do that. All right, and created, great. Go back to here, browse. Uh, we'll do the demo one that we had created. You can see that other one that we had created as well. And there we go. It, you get to review all the settings. You can see the subnets, the security groups, all the settings we did. And there we go. It's going to take a few minutes to actually create. So, yeah, they say up to 15 minutes. So we'll see how that goes. In the meantime, for the connector. So you're going to create a custom plugin here. And what you do is you just go to create custom plugin. You point to the S3 bucket with the jar file that you can download from our Git repo. Now I've already created it because it also takes time and the, it's fairly self-explanatory. Here's the jar file. For instance, it's in the zip file that's in the repo and under releases, this is 1015. Obviously whatever the current releases will be what it is. And yeah, pretty straightforward there. The tricky bit, and the thing that tripped me up, admittedly, is the IAM roles. Now, again, for this, I'm not going to run this fully just yet because uh, that's still provisioning the instance. But you do need to have IAM roles that this connector can use to access the MSK cluster, to access the internet, things like that. So one thing that I have done to make my life easier, again, is uh, if we do this, we have two roles that we've created and they're fairly, like fairly permissive. All right, we've got administrative access and then it's the MSK full access is the policy that we care about there. And this one we needed to allow a lot of access. The other one, which we will actually be making use of in a little bit here, is this EC2 version of that same one. It has full access as well. And it also has these Kafka clusters. So it's a little tricky. Uh, it's non obvious, at least it wasn't to me. But Kafka cluster is a very different permission than MSK full access. And where that especially comes into play is when you want to create topics. If you don't have Kafka cluster access, MSK full access isn't actually enough. Or at least it wasn't in my case when I was setting it up. So, all right, going back to MSK here, uh, it's still creating that. It's going to be, again, a few more minutes. So we'll go through. Let's make our lives a little easier while we're waiting. So we're going to create a new instance. We're going to leave mostly defaults. All right, but we're going to use this instance for a few things. All right, first, we're going to use this to be able to create topics. We're going to be able to use this to submit data if we want. We're going to be able to use this to verify internet access, which, as you can imagine, pretty important and actually a common source of frustration. So it is helpful. The thing is, this obviously just having the security access isn't enough. It needs a route to the internet, which is what we set up with the subnets and the NAT gateways and all that. And so, you know, this is a way of verifying it. We're going to use the Linux, uh, yeah, the Linux, <laughs> Linux that's built in. We'll use the micro tier because again, we don't need a lot of processing power for this. And we are going to use the VPC that we created. We pick a, a subnet that we want, uh, public or private. Uh, I'm going to do public one. Uh, I will use an existing security group because 
Why not? Again, it's widely permissive, so we don't have to worry about it necessarily. We'll leave the simple storage, and then that would be it. Now, there is one tricky thing here. I am not doing keys here uh, for my purposes. If you've already set them up or you want to, and you should, key login is very convenient. It is very convenient, very useful. But one thing you can do is uh, they created an endpoint. We're going to create a new one, and it is the EC2 instance connect endpoint. And we are going to set that up here. There's the security group. And let's go with private one. And you can create ones for each one if you want. I'm just doing private one for the sake of it, because just having that's enough. And we're going to label this MSK EC2 connect. Again, you know, make it sensible. When we launch this, we can connect through that. We don't need this key pair here. Again, they recommend it. Uh, this isn't necessarily a best practice. This is just what I am doing. Okay, so we've got that created. Here we go. It'll be momentarily. This is much faster to spin up, thankfully. Yeah, be giving it a seconds here and it should be done and there it is see piece of cake now we're going to connect to it ah see this is this ec2 instance connect endpoint we've got the ip address of it we've got the user which is we're just going to use and oh does it not have oh create in progress it's still Ah, it's still creating. We got to give it a little bit here. Um, in the meantime, while we're waiting, let's go. If we go to endpoints, pending, there it is. That's why we got to wait for that. All right, so we'll let that go. And let's see if cluster's done. Still creating. All right, so we're going to pause here and come back in a few minutes once this is all sort of built out. And yeah, we'll resume from there. So see you in a minute. So while that's actually setting up, let's connect to the instance. Uh, here's the EC2 instance connect endpoint again. We notice that it was provisioned and we log in. There are directions online for how to do uh, the sort of initial creation of topics and, you know, producing a message to MSK and all that. Uh, I actually have set it up somewhat ahead of time. So I downloaded uh, this version of, of Kafka here. And uh, if you look here in the libs folder, there's actually a jar file there. That is the AWS one. That's that one right there. And if we go back here, you can see I created client.properties, which is actually fairly simple, but powerful. So uh, this I did set up a little bit ahead of time uh, while I sort of was waiting for things to load. But I would say that, you know, th there are fairly clear directions in the sort of AWS documentation. So I'm not going to go too into it. I'm not going to go too far into it. One thing I will say is you can using this, uh, and I'm not going to actually execute this command just yet because uh, the, the cluster is still sort of firing up and I'm, I'm actually not uh, super worried about creating it here. This is just the steps, but you, you can actually run Kafka topics and actually go ahead and create a you know topic to use and you can use producer to then create uh, messages to actually send i just wanted to call that out because it is very helpful at least in my experience all right and i'm actually going to stop the instance because we don't need it at this point uh still available in case we do that's why it's just stopped and not terminated but same deal all right it's still creating as you can see i'm going to walk through the steps for creating the connector here 
Uh, I'm not going to use actual credentials, so it wouldn't connect anyway, but I could show you the basics and then you'll be good to go. So give it a name, try and, you know, have it be reasonable. Give it a cluster. Uh, this is going to point to the cr cluster once it's created. Give it the config. Now we do have a full list of configurations on our documentation, which I highly recommend folks check out. But uh, basically you need a number of tasks and you need the connector class. And then there's some default sort of, you know, the database, a host name, a password, the port, username, etc. Basic sort of credentials. Um, again, you can see we're using some sample settings here. You would use your actual values, which is why this wouldn't start up for the record. Uh, one thing I will call attention to is you can do provisioned or auto scale. I'm just doing provision because, again, this is a small test instance, so I don't necessarily need it to do anything. This is that uh, default configuration. That security IAM role that I mentioned is right here. Uh, oh, it needs a, it won't progress until it can select a cluster. But that's it. Uh, that should be all you need. Uh, security, we can leave as is, logs and tags. We would set that same CloudWatch group. Nothing crazy there. And then we would create it. And that's it. It shows up in the list of connectors and you'll be good to go. Uh, if there's any questions or anything like that, you can usually go to the logs in CloudWatch and sort of see what error messages you're getting. A lot of times the things you're running into are going to be some configuration, especially around the network. But hopefully this way, everything will be squared away. One last time, just showing it here. This is that VPC that we created. And we have the different subnets going. So the NAT for the private ones is right here. This is the internet gateway here. And you can actually see three public subnets, three private subnets route to the internet. That's because they actually route to this NAT gateway, which then routes through to the internet gateway. And actually, if I click here, I'll just show you because it's fascinating. Yeah, there's the subnet that goes to it. So piece of cake. And yeah, you should have a uh, setup. Any questions, feel free to throw them on our, you know, our GitHub repo or the community Slack. You can check out all that at uh, clickhouse.com. And thank you very much.